Hello guys, Henry here and I'm here today to try and give you guys a couple of tips to help out because uh, a lot of you guys are watching my videos now and my tutorials and I'm quite thankful for that and I just wanted to try and give you a couple of other tips that will help along the line and um, <coughs> so it took me a long time to get into the game industry as an environment artist and one of the reasons that I recently within the past year figured out is because that my render room was horrible there's two reasons for that one I was using the blender render I wasn't using cycles or anything else and I would mainly just screenshot my images put them into Photoshop and play about with a couple of values so they were quite horrible I, I might actually have an old um, yeah okay so here you go so this piano <coughs> You can see how bad the uh, aliasing is on it, and the ambient occlusion doesn't really work too well. And the reason for that is that I was using um, screenshots and just Photoshop, so it was quite a horrible process. And you can see the difference between a uh, piano to my latest kayak. You can see the difference. Uh, the specular and the ambient occlusion sticks out more. Um, again, my trees. It's such a great tool to use Marmoset because you get such great detail. And it is the same as press and print screen, except you press F11 and it comes out better, if not better. And you can also use glass, really realistic as well, and it, it just looks pretty spot on. So, what I want to try and tell you guys, you know, if you guys are looking at getting into the industry, what you're going to need to do, what you're going to need to know, and how you're going to need to do things. Um, one of my main things which helped me was to change my portfolio to albums and categorize everything that I have. Um, that was when I was approached by Sony to work at Guerrilla Games. And they were like, well, if you put your environments here and your props here and your weapons and every other categorized area, we can look at it easier and we can see you know where you're suitable because they were like okay well we want you as a lighting artist and all of my re I just use lighting for rendering I don't use lighting you know I don't focus on trying to work on lighting I just use it to render and uh, they looked at my portfolio and said we we quite like your work we want you to come and work for us as a lighting artist and I was like well you know I don't really do a lot of lighting so it's not my thing I want to be an environment artist so uh, I had to turn them down obviously um, but what I'm trying to get out here is you know w once I put my portfolio into these categories um, it makes it easier for everyone else to navigate and it also helps them look at what you're best at instead of just having to scroll through everything and I've even had to reorganize this so many times because I don't quite like my PBR material renders up the top if you're a um, material artist or a texture artist you can have it up the top um, so yeah one of the the main programs that I use now I hated I didn't want to use it and I hated it I was just like no way in hell it was the same as Unreal Engine when I first got Unreal Engine I was like, I absolutely hate this. I don't want to use it. I hate the user interface. It just sucks. Especially because I had a really crap computer and I had to render everything. Because it, the engine that I use is CryEngine because of the fact that it has real-time dynamic lighting, which helps when you're trying to take screenshots in engine. Um, Sunset Beach, this one here, this is a screenshot from any engine, as you can see. It was on my old computer, so you can see how bad the FPS was. It was only 15 FPS. But that was just a quick screenshot, just by playing about with a couple of lighting. I didn't have to bake any lighting or anything like that. Same with the dentist room. Um, again, a, a, the tiles across the side here, that, that was one of my main focuses because of the fact that in my reference image that I had to work from, it was quite... But I'm getting off topic anyway. The, the It was just that... The Cry Engine is better for real time rendering for me. So that's the engine that I find is best when you're working on a scene. Instead of, I mean, you can put everything into Marmoset and do it, but I find the engine works relatively easy because one, you're learning an engine 
which is always helpful because if you go to a studio and they decide to change engines, which believe me does happen a lot, you are going to be familiar familiar with the user interface. Whereas if you were to go to a studio and have only Unity experience and they want to use Unreal or they want to use Unigine or CryEngine or Snowdrop or any other engine out there, you're going to have to relearn that engine. So one of the best things that I can suggest before even doing anything else is learn to import your assets into an engine, learn to use and navigate the engine, learn to use the lighting, the particles, and the textures, shaders, and everything else within it. You don't have to constantly use these aspects, but it helps, not only for your personal projects, but one thing for me is I went into um, the studio where I'm at at the moment, Jimcraft, as a environment artist, and within a couple of weeks, because I had so much knowledge on um, the CryEngine, and I could solve problems relatively quickly, I was given the opportunity to become a technical artist as well which is good because they're sort of like the go-to guys if anybody has an issue so it saves a lot of you know it helps you learn bits you can see how other people are doing bits and you can learn more that way so it always helps to know your engines so this is Marmoset tool bag um, it's fairly cheap to buy um, you can buy a seat for 149 which a seat would mean one person using it so if, if you were running a small company and you wanted several people to use it you could buy four seats which means that four people will be able to use the program simultaneously on one ID um, so this is a really good program in terms of rendering because it, it's just it, this is all it's real time as well I mean you do have to play about with a couple of settings but in the long run, once you learn this, it's relatively straightforward to use. Um, so that's the first product. So we can close that now. The next one is Substance Painter. Substance Painter, I implore you to get. If you are doing any type of texturing, Substance Painter is the way forward because you can bake your high poly onto your low poly so much quicker and so much easier than you can with Blender or 3ds Max or Maya or Mudbox or even ZBrush for that matter so that is another good one to go for you can see here just the power of it, it is a great program to use and the PBR techniques and tactics on it are just top notch they're the best that I honestly can't say anything bad about Substance Painter I can show you how quick it is to change things about if we wanted to add a pattern onto the kayak it's just a click of a button we can change the UV which will sort of overlap it but not so we'll still get the final bake this way we can also change the material so if I go into my smart materials and I'm going to choose uh, fabric UCP so now when I place this in should replace the whole kayak with a military sort of cover. Now that's just that there looks pretty, you know, it looks unified, it looks good. We can then go in and further this more. So we can add a mask and we can add a generator into our mask and we can select dirt and it will come up as just a dirty pattern on top. And you just play the dirt levels and obviously you wouldn't use this pattern you would use something else but you see what I'm getting at another good thing as well is we can add a mask and select the area I'm gonna select UV because of the way I UV this so if I select this bring this under my cryptic logo you can see how straightforward that was and then we have our plastic under which is the underbelly And this is the ease, ease of being able to use this program. It's such a good tool to use and learn. You get instantaneous updates on your textures. When you're finished, you just export your resources, choose a folder, what type you want. You can even select an engine. So you have the CryEngine, Dota 2, Corona, Arnold, Lumberyard. It did have Unreal Engine, but I don't know where it's gone for some reason. <laughs> but again, 
you can also select which textures you're going to get from it. So you can get it your normal OpenGL, which is the one that I recommend you use because the normal does not really a lot. Your height, which you might use depending on what you're really working on. If you're using rocks, you're going to be using height. And then obviously we have your roughness, metallic and base color. So metallic would act as sort of a specular, I'm assuming, and the roughness works as it says it is a roughness. So that's another good program there to use. Um, I was asked the question recently whether Substance Painter allows multiple UVs and um, the short answer is yes. So a quick way to show you this would be that ugliness up there. Ah, that's why it's because it's one of my older ones. Okay, so a quick way to show you this would be to select this area here. So I'm going to select rope on both sides. Okay. Now, what I would do is unwrap this, but it's already unwrapped, so I'm going to leave it. And I would also unwrap this, but it's already unwrapped. Control P to fill up my screen a little bit more, if it wants to. Doesn't have to. <laughs> so with that like this, what I can then do is I would have this one here as the boat, and I would name this material as the wire. And then when I were to export into here, I would have these texture lists. I'll, I'll do it now. It's going to be ugly because I'll be messing about with the topology, and it will look ugly. So, so we have or two here we have boat and wire these are two different shades and they will act as individual UVs so if we were to put a metallic texture onto our boat that's one and you see the wire is left so we can put a plastic and that will act as a second UV. So we can work on multiple UVs and multiple materials at once. So the whole process of this, adding the rubber and the plastic and the underbelly and the wire, you can do that as one texture map or you can do that as several texture maps. And if you add several materials, you will then start to have different UVs and you will, you will have to place them all together. So if you want one final material for the engine it's best to work join everything together and just put one texture on it you can add several textures colorize them bake a color map and then export your color map to substance painter to use if you want to select individual areas but still have one material shader i'll probably go into that later on in a different tutorial because i'm blabbering on a bit now okay so that's substance designer uh, substance painter done and out of the way great tool it will help you tenfold with texturing abilities and it will help you learn the process of baking high poly onto low. So our next one is Substance Designer. And Substance Designer is a procedural texturing program. So Substance Painter is an object texturing program. I'll open Substance Designer and I will show you how this one works. Okay, so Windows Reset Layout. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to, in my graph, create a new substance. I'm just going to call this brick because I always work with a brick. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's just one of those things. Okay, so with this open, <laughs> we can use a brick generator we can see here our texture we can see here our model and what we will do is add an output right click view outputs and you can see it adds it onto the model you guys are probably thinking oh wow that's so great 
but don't need it unnecessary but just let me show you what else it does so this one I'm going to add and I'm going to change it to a yeah let's go over normal actually and then we will add a normal here this will convert the brick into a normal place that there now you can see a slight normal map on it so we want to add some color so go into a gradient map we're also going to add in a cloud so where's noise noises and we're going to go for fractal sun base now this is a really good program to use because if I open up Google type in brick and you get this image I'm going to drag it onto my other screen but you'll see what I'm doing I'm selecting these colors doesn't seem to want to load too quick okay so I've just dragged that onto my other screen and what I'm gonna do is go to my gradient editor and pick a gradient and I'm just gonna left click and drag across the image and what that will do is select colors for me to work with so I can invert positions or invert colors so with that done move it over and we're gonna add a blend I want this to be the foreground and we're going to add a mortar to it as well so we're going to add a grunge map another gradient map and this one is going to be the mortar so I'm going to pick color again and then I'm just going to go through the white areas like so just to get this grunge map add that into the background select the mask as an opacity and let's add that to our you can see how straightforward and quick it is there's obviously a lot more to it one of the things I would also suggest is always using a um, grayscale on the side add a levels to that another output and change that to a roughness you can see the dirt on top of the brick starting to react to the light more fluid in certain areas and obviously that can be changed just by turning up or down the roughness I'm not going to go into the whole detail of creating this because it is a lengthy process but I will show you one thing is that we've used this texture this brick generator we can come straight in start to modify this instance Let's have it blurred you see we start to get that effect now we can also change the variation of bricks which will change the height if we were using a height also changes the color for you which is relatively beneficial So yeah, this is why Substance Designer is a great t t program to learn as well. Just for the fact that you can create procedural, stylized materials. And it does, it creates everything. We have our roughness map, our n normal map, diffuse map. We can also create a height map if we want. So here's our height and you can see how it affects so that is why Substance Designer is a good tool to use and learn 
And the reason I'm telling you this, guys, is because all of these programs will help you get into the industry. Learning them, using them, will create so much more ease of work for you and your modeling would just come with it. And one of the things I used to focus on was modeling and I would text it as I modeled and I realized that just go nuts on your modeling, bring it into Substance Painter and let it do the work for you. So Substance Painter and Substance Designer is a great one. As you can see again to buy it for an indie license is what I would suggest to go for. You just pay £20 a month. $20 a month, sorry. And obviously it's free for a thousand a year. So as long as you create a game where you don't get a thousand dollars a year, you would then only have to pay twenty a month. And if it above a thousand a year, it's sixty four a month. Now that is up until you release whatever you're working on. If you release a game and this is talking for game designers and developers here. If you release a game and oh wait no that's Substance Live, I do apologize. I'm thinking of these two, so they're five ninety, which isn't too bad. But if you release a game and you work on betas and updates for it, this would still apply to you. You would still have to pay until you'd finalized and you weren't working any more betas and it was just in the background. That's when you would stop paying the royalty fees. So yeah. That substance designer bitmap to material. This one you guys will love. Now, I use Crazy Bump at the moment. However, I'm at a bit of a bit of a loss with Crazy Bump because I actually bought a version of this. It's, not, it's only something like forty pounds. It's not a lot of money, but when my studio sent me my new computer, I lost my license key and. I've contacted these guys several times to get my license key back because I can't find an email and they will not even contact me back to say sorry no you're gonna have to buy it again so for that reason I've gone over to bitmap to material which is another algorithmic program now this is a really really good program because if I open up my downloads I might actually use a leaf just to show you what it can do no we, we will use a rock texture or a bark texture one or the other whichever one pops up first debris okay if I get the right one okay so with debris you can change your size here as well so you go higher and lower so you have all your selection of your material maps here so you have the amine occlusion, the height, the normal, metallic, the roughness and the base colour. <coughs> so what we can do is come into our global, use a light equaliser. This one will affect your base colour. Sort of like a high pass. You can also make it tile if it's not seamless. You can make it tile. Say if you having to go into Photoshop and do it. And trust me, this is tiled now. Uh, you you can change the transition position. So you can see the blends of it transitioning or not. Relatively easy. Which is good. You can also change the transition size. So you can have it near the back. Or you can have it further in and more debris. But this is like a procedural way to be able to create the textures too. You can bring them into here and work on them and then export when you've done you can right click and save the material of the diffuse so that's what global and then relief is for the normal map and this really goes to town on removing noise and recognizing shapes a lot easier mid frequencies I would put mid frequencies on and then you have your normal intensity here depending on how intense you wanted it and I will always select OpenGL for my normals you can also play with the relief pinch and what that does is it selects each individual object in the scene 
and adds a radius around it so it stands out more a good way to be able to show you this is the height you can see where it's just selected each of the rocks and just painted them white so they can work then you have obviously have all your other materials here you also have a grunge map which is pretty good to be honest I've not really used it too much but it just lightens and darkens areas and adds desaturated colors and just goes nuts basically and if I go into my 3D view because I just want to turn the height on we've got materials shader tessellation you can see here now how the the rocks stand out we turn the base color off slightly you can see it just it works so nice so that is another great program to use this is the reasons why it just makes things ten times easier then you can use endo and dedo but it's a lengthy process and uh, not one I recommend wasting time on when you can do this so again here's the tiling I was telling you about once you've made it seamless you can tile it this is good for like props if you were to do a skip you could add the debris into it and you have the material here for it so it's beneficial so that is bitmap to material and it is another one that I recommend you get the next one I recommend that you do learn is world machine and the reason why is because if you have a look at Battlefield 4's height maps you have a look at the world around them all of these terrains are created with world machine it's such a good program to use such a good program to learn this mountains I created with world machine but it is really good hard to learn but once you do learn it you can get some really really good features out of it so this is how the startup look and I'll change my product project parameters to 1k resolution so you can see you got your terrace which I would take out and I would add in a natural erosion you can see how the erosion has a better effect than the terrace which is what most companies are doing at the moment is taking advantage of this erosion and the realism you get out of it it's just beautiful so this is another procedural program where you can procedurally generate terrain and it works in two ways you can generate entire continents or you can generate just small areas now the reason why generating the continents would be really good is because if you think about it a lot of the sci-fi games the the world's looking insane at the moment all we all we have to do is generate a continent go into our world editor it would help if we change the elevation let's go to mountains for now select that and one other thing that I'm going to do fairly quickly is I'm going to add in a macro just so you can see where the continents would be 
So I'm going to add in coastal overlay. Lock the preview. And then you see here we can create entire continents. Set current, scale it up. We can also put a shape in so that anything on the bound box wouldn't be rendered. So when we were to finalize this, we would have huge continents. You can also just literally draw some stuff on a pen and paper, put it in here as a height map, and it will generate areas of where to work. And you can see how the continents works. So there's a great program to learn and use, and it would help you. Next one is CryEngine. Now, CryEngine has just released CryEngine 5 which is exactly the same as Unreal apart from the fact that it has the dynamic time of day everything else is now near enough the same as Unreal which is another great product to learn so these are the last two that I implore you to learn because these engines are the main used engines what's focused on the most and this will help you get into the industry so hopefully this sort of little talk has helped you to understand what programs do, how they work and why they would benefit you. So if you have any questions leave some in the comments below. Anything else you want to find out from me, leave the questions or message me. Subscribe for more and thank you for your time. Check out my portfolio if you want to know anything. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one tutorials, tutoring so yeah thank you goodbye